How you doing guys, welcome to another video. This is topic four, chemical bonding and structures. This is volume 4B where we look at covalent structures and another important video. Let's get straight into it. Okay, so in this volume we look at molecular geometry, bond angles, and we talk about some important exceptions for the Vespart rule. So the shapes and species are determined by the repulsion of electrons according to this VSEPR theory. Valence, shell, electron, pair, repulsion. And that indicates the electron domain and the molecular geometry of the molecule. And we need to know how to use that to work out the shape. So the number of electron domains determines the shapes of these covalent molecules. The shapes is a result of the electron repulsion. Each pair of electrons is repelled as far away as possible from all of the other electrons in the molecule. And this is the Vespa theory. So carbon dioxide, we looked at drawing the Lewis structure in a previous video. Remember, it has a carbon with two double bonds to the oxygen, and the oxygen has two pairs of lone non-bonding electrons or lone pair electrons. Now we say that it's electron geometry, domain geometry, the location of the electrons in the bonds is linear. The two regions of the negatively charged bonding electrons, the electron domain geometry, they're at linear to each other. So that means that the molecular geometry or the shape of this molecule is also linear. The bond angle between the oxygen, carbon, oxygen, that's 180 degrees. Hydrogen cyanide is another one we looked, in a previous, looked at in a previous video, where we have a carbon that has a triple bond to a nitrogen and then a single bond to a hydrogen. Again, it's got two electron domains. Those electron domains are at 180 degrees from each other, so it's described as a linear electron domain geometry and also a linear molecular geometry. Again, the bond angle between those electron pairs, those bonding electrons, is 180 degrees. A molecule that contains three electron domains and no non-bonding electrons exists as what we call a trigonal planar molecule. This is the example of methanol, where we have a carbon which is double bonded to an oxygen, and it has two single bonds to, a, to two hydrogens. Because the carbon has three regions of negative charge, those three regions will repel each other as far away as each other as possible, and that gives us the trigonal planar arrangement. The electron domain geometry, again, is those three pairs of electrons, those three bonding electrons, those three regions of negative charge, getting as far away from each other as possible, and in a triangular planar arrangement, they can. The molecular geometry, the way this molecule looks, is also described as triangular planar with a 120 degree bond angle. If we have a molecule that contains four bonded electron domains, it will exist as a tetrahedral. That is a carbon with four single covalent bonds. So if we have a molecule like methane, a carbon with four hydrogens attached to it, this will have four electron domains, and those electron domains will be in a tetrahedral arrangement. In this arrangement, those electron pairs can get as far away from each other as possible, according to the Vespa theory. So its electron domain geometry is described as tetrahedral, four electron domains. Its molecular geometry is also described as tetrahedral, and the bond angle is 109.5 degrees, and you need to remember that. Ethane is two carbons connected together, and then each carbon is connected to three hydrogens. However, each carbon has four single covalent bonds, so each of the carbons will exist in the tetrahedral formation. So the electron domain geometry will be tetrahedral, because each carbon has four covalent bonds, four electron pairs, so it will exist as a tetrahedral. The geometry of the carbons are also described as tetrahedral, four single bonds. 
and the bond angle between each of those bonds will be 109.5. It becomes a little bit more complicated when we start to put lone pairs of electrons on atoms. So when we have lone pairs, the situation starts to change. These electrons are identified as electron domains, but they change the overall structure of the molecule. So nitrogen in group 5 has one pair of non-bonding electrons, and this plays an important part in the shape of the molecule. So ammonia, NH3, is a nitrogen with three single bonds, three single covalent bonds to three hydrogens. And we describe this as being a triangular pyramid with the hydrogens underneath the nitrogen and its lone pair sitting at the top. Now because it has four electron domains, the three bonding ones and the one non-bonding, it's described as a tetrahedral electron domain. However, the molecular geometry, where the nitrogens bond to the hydrogens, is described as triangular pyramid. The bond angle in a triangular pyramid is approximately 107 degrees. Phosphine, PH3, Phosphorus is in the same group as nitrogen, so it will exhibit the same type of bonding. It will have a phosphorus attached to three hydrogens. It will have one pair of non-bonding electrons. So it's electron domain geometry with the four different domains, one being a lone pair. It will have a tetrahedral arrangement. Its molecular geometry will be described as the same, triangular pyramid, and its bond angle will be 107. Degrees. For the electron domain geometry, you've got to think about how many electron domains there are, and for the molecular geometry, you just look at where those atoms are in space. Oxygen now has two pairs of non-bonding electrons, so it will share, it, share two electrons to form two single covalent bonds. So water will have a single covalent bond to one hydrogen and then another single covalent bond to another hydrogen, leaving it with two pairs of non-bonding electrons. It's electron domain geometry. Well, it has four electron domains, two bonding, two non-bonding. So that means it will still take up the tetrahedral electron domain geometry, but its molecular geometry, when we just consider the oxygen and the hydrogens, uh, is described as bent or V-shaped. A bent or V-shaped molecule will have a bond angle of approximately 105 degrees. Hydrogen sulfide, again, sulfur is in the same group as oxygen, so it will exhibit the same type of domain geometry and molecular geometry. One of the things we need to remember about sulfur is sometimes it can expand its octet and have more than eight electrons in its outer shell, and we come across one of those later. It will have the same electron domain geometry as water and the same molecular geometry. Two molecules that we also need to study contain what we call a coordinate covalent bond. A coordinate covalent bond is a covalent bond in which both the shared electrons is provided by one of the atoms. This is sometimes referred to as a dative bond. Coordinate bonds can be identified using an arrow that points from the direction of the origin of the electrons. So basically one of the atoms is giving both of the electrons in the bond. So ammonium, NH4+, is a nitrogen that is covalently bonded to four hydrogens. The extra hydrogen gives it a positive charge. Now, its electron domain geometry will now consist of four single covalent bonds, with the bond up the top being the, the coordinate bond. That means its electron domain geometry now is going to be tetrahedral, and now its molecular geometry, because it's got that extra hydrogen, will also be considered tetrahedral, giving it a bond angle of 109.5. The hydronium ion, H3O+, well, it's a water molecule with an extra proton, an extra hydrogen. So that means it will now still exist with the tetrahedral electron domain geometry, one lone pair and then three covalently bonded pairs. And now its molecular geometry is going to change to triangular pyramid. The three hydrogens will be below the oxygen with the lone pair sticking out the top. That would give 
the bond angle of 107 degrees. Okay, volume 4B, some top tips. Always remember to put the lone pairs in, especially if you're asked to draw a Lewis diagram. And the coordinate bonds, the arrow points from the direction of the origin of the electrons. Thanks for watching guys, don't forget, drop a like on the video, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you.